In this presentation, we will record the purchase of equipment with debt. In other words, financing the purchase of equipment within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. The way to open the open windows is to go to the view tab up top and go to the open windows list. What we're going to do is record the purchase of equipment with debt. This is a fairly basic transaction, but it's a little bit more complex and there's not really a form within the phone home page in order to accommodate this transaction. Question, why not? Why isn't there a form in the home page? The purchase of equipment is going to be something that doesn't happen all the time. And most of the items in the vendor, customer, and employees section of the homepage are those which happen often. So because they happen often, then we have this setup that will guide us through the flowcharts and QuickBooks will then make these forms that basically drive those standardized transactions so that we can put them in place as easily as possible. The purchase of equipment, if we're talking about large property plants and equipment, is something that's not going to happen all the time that's going to happen periodically and so there's not really a form that's going to be set up just for the purchase of equipment now if we were to purchase the equipment with just cash of course then we could just write a check for it or we could use the check register however if we purchased equipment and we financed the whole thing financed the purchase then it's going to be more difficult to, to write a check or use the check checking account or the check register in order to record that we can't use them because cash isn't involved in that transaction if on the other hand we put down a down payment which is common and finance the rest of it then we could then use the check register and see if we can put the other two accounts in there as we write the check there would be three accounts affected in that scenario cash would be going down we'd have a, a payable a liability a loan that would be going up and we'd have the equipment that we had purchased which would also go up in the case where we finance the entire thing then we can't we can't do that because cash isn't affected and therefore we can't use the write a check which means cash will go down and we cannot use the check register which in essence is the same thing so how would we record this type of transaction we could go to the journal entries which would be the logical choice and the journal entries would be going up here to the top to company and then we're going to go to make journal entries here there's a couple different ways we can go there but we go to this way i go there we go to the drop down company and then make a journal entry and then we would have the date here and we'd enter the journal entry and it would be a debit to the equipment and it would be a credit to a loan that we would be taking out now I'm not going to put it into the journal entry, although I think that would probably be the best way to go if we understand journal entries because the debits and credits could be a little bit confusing. And so uh, if we don't understand debits and credits, is there a workaround in QuickBooks to enter a transaction such as this? And QuickBooks tries to use the registers in order to do that. So the registers, uh, we have one, of course, for the check register, which makes sense, which we've used often. But QuickBooks makes a similar type of register for every other type of account. And as long as the account only has two transactions in it, then we could still get away with really using those registers. If we have a, an account that a transaction that has more than two accounts involved and doesn't involve cash, then it starts to get to the point where we really need a journal entry in those instances. And we need to know debits and credits that we might want to talk to an accountant to help us to set up that type of transaction. So I'm going to try to use registers here. We're going to close this out. And there's two accounts that are going to be affected. One is accounts uh, payable, or one is going to be a loan payable, and the other is going to be office equipment. When I'm considering these type of things, I usually think about what we're getting because that's going to be easier for most people to understand. So what we're getting is equipment. So I would go to the equipment register as opposed to go into the loan payable register, go to the equipment register, and then the other account will be loan payable. Let's see what we are talking about here. A couple ways we can get into the register. If you go to the banking dropdown and use register, then it defaults typically to the checking account unless you're in some other account or in some other window. 
But if you hit the drop down, all the balance sheet accounts are going to be here. So if we're talking about uh, equipment, then we can go to the equipment register. If, we, if we're talking about furniture and equipment here, then we can go, okay, equipment register. Looks very much, very similar to the checking account register. However, this does not affect the checking account, does not affect cash at all, unless we assign the other account to cash. This is going to be on the equipment. So I'm going to close this back out. One other place we can go to get there, which might be more logical for, there's other places, other ways to go than this, but the other major way that I would go to get there would be going to lists, drop down, chart of accounts. And then this will give us all of our accounts, of course. And we're going to go into this time the equipment account. So we're going into furniture and equipment. And then we can just double click on that. And that'll give us the furniture and equipment. So again, we, we can see it just like a check register. All we have to do is remind ourselves that this is the equipment register. So when it says decrease or increase, what it means is we're decreasing or decreasing the equipment account. And we don't therefore need to know whether equipment has a debit or credit balance and whether we should debit or credit it to make it go up or down. Because all we need to know is that it has some balance, whatever it is, and we want to make it go up or down. That's all we need to know. And then we'll just choose the other side, which in our case will be loan payable. And again, we don't need to know debits and credits or, or how to make something go up or down in terms of debits and credits. QuickBooks will just do the debit or credit needed to make the loan payable uh, the other side of the transaction. So as long as we only have two accounts, this is going to be a viable option to avoid entering a journal entry to avoid uh, debits and credits. So we're going to tab through this. The date's going to be uh, 2-28-2019. We're going to keep that. We're going to say that uh, we purchased this from Office Depot, we're going to say. That's the vendor. And we need the equipment to increase. We're in the equipment register. We want it to go up. So we're going to go 500 in the increase. And then all we need to do is select the other side. We didn't pay cash. We're going to take out a loan. We're going to finance it. And we could set up a new loan uh, to, to break out all of our loans, or we can kind of group our loans together, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to put it into a loan payable. So we'll select the drop down and we'll scroll down to the loan payable. Actually, we're going to go up because it's in the liabilities. And we've got the loan payable. So here's our loan payable. And of course, we could type it in there as well, loan payable. It'll default to that. And there we have it. So note that this loan payable is going to have more than just one loan in it. And that's okay as long as we know that and we can support that. So we, we should have the backup documentation of the loan, the amortization tables that can support those loans. And we'll talk more about how to group the loans for presentation purposes uh, when we do the adjusting entries. So then we might want to put some kind of note, uh, loan for uh, equipment. And we might want to name the type of equipment in order to be more efficient there. But the more detail on the memo, the better. Hopefully we don't need them because hopefully everything goes smoothly. But if we ever have to go back and check something out, then the more detail we have in order to know what we did is better. So then we have that. Now remember that it won't record it until you hit enter and you hear the beep if you have the beep selected in the preferences. And then we know it's entered. We'll see the balance will change here. And note the difference here. It says it's a journal entry. This is this stands for journal entry. So note we we hit we had this transaction up here. That's when we wrote a check to equipment to buy equipment in the past. And it if I double click here, it's going to default to the check. And remember remember that QuickBooks will always default to some kind of form if there's a form there to default to. Here there is no form to default to. If I had put this to the checking account, then it would probably have written a check. But there is no form to default to for financing equipment with a loan to finance the entire thing. So therefore, it's going to use the journal entry. So if I double click this, it still created the journal entry. And this is a useful way to kind of learn debits and credits if you wanted to look at it in this format too. Because now you can kind of think, oh, okay, well, we debited furniture and equipment and it credited the loan. And the furniture equipment went up. So it must have increased furniture and equipment and the loan went up because we owe more money. So you could start to kind of think through the debits and credits if you wanted to think of, of it in that way. It increases and decreases by looking at the register and then go into the journal entries created by them. But we're going to close this back out. 
And that's going to be the transaction. If we go to our reports now, if we close this back out and close this, we're going to go to the balance sheet, go into reports drop down, company and financial. We're going to scroll down to the balance sheet, which is the balance sheet standard. Changing the dates in the customized reports section up top, dates being 010119 to 123119. So the year of 2019 and select OK. Then we're going to take a look at the two accounts affected. One will be the equipment account. That's going to be under fixed assets. Now at 103, double clicking that. And so here we have it. So we bought some with a check, a check, and then we had this journal entry. So again, it defaults to the journal entry. Double clicking that takes us to our register. So this, again, QuickBooks is trying not to take us to the journal entry because it wants to avoid debits and credits as much as possible for so the debits and credits still run the system so debits and credits are still behind everything but quickbooks is trying to mask it as much as possible to use increases and decreases so that it can make it as easy as possible for people that don't know debits and credits to enter this into the system and again as long as we have two accounts affected we can we can do that and not without too much trouble that will work but if we double click on the general journal we'll see what's really behind all this. And of course, that's debits and credits. So here's the debit and credit transaction. Closing this back out, closing this back out, closing this back out. Then the other side of this is going to go to the loan payable, which is gonna be a liability account. Here it is, loan payable for the 74878. Double clicking on that item. We then see the loan payable here. And once again, it being a journal entry, the other side going to furniture and fixture. If we double click on that item, we go back to our journal entry and back to our journal entry here. Closing this back out, closing this back out, closing this out. It's important to note that neither of these entries are going to affect the, neither of these accounts are going to affect the income statement or profit or loss and net income. So net income isn't affected, the profit and loss isn't affected, the income statement isn't affected, only balance sheet accounts. That's not because we didn't pay cash, that wouldn't be the difference, that wouldn't be the triggering factor as to whether we would have an expense possibly on the income statement. It's because we purchased equipment and the equipment's gonna be a long-term asset. We will expense it, when will, when will we expense it? When we depreciate it over the useful life of that equipment and that's going to be an adjusting entry we will do at the end of the period for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info